So far, we uh, got back at it on Sunday, had a really good productive practice on Sunday. The guys had a great mentality and a great attitude. And then I thought we had our best Tuesday practice so far of the year uh, today, so I was encouraged uh, to see that. I think our guys are uh, anxious about playing, excited about playing, and ready to get out there and know that we're going to face a Houston team that's going to be really uh, excited to play us. And, it's a great opportunity for them to bounce back. I think our guys know the challenge is going to be big for us on Saturday, and I think they're working really hard to go out and play well. So you mentioned after the game some frustration on some things that happened. Yeah. But after you watch the film, did any of that change? Or? I was still a little bit frustrated at times. I mean, just, you know, we didn't run the ball as well as I would have, would have liked. Uh, now, there's some reasons. Part of those reasons were us, and part of them were scheme-related, and, we, and then we tried to just stick with it. And, and so sometimes you kind of felt like you were banging your head against the wall at times. But, um, yeah, I mean, look, you know, you want your team to, to get better fast. And, you know, we had a huge amount of um, improvement that needed to take place from week one to week two. Um, and it did, but, you know, you want more. You know, you want to you wanna kind of be at that point where you say, okay, we're ready to go. And, you know, I, I honestly, our, our performance thus far this season has probably mirrored our performance a little bit last season. You know, we had a, a, a better Colorado team we played in week one. If we had played a really good Colorado team last year, I don't, I don't know how we would have fared in that game. You know what I mean? And so, you know, we're, we're still trying to, to find our way. And I think that um, um, I think we're headed to the right direction, in the right direction. And, and again, I like our sense, our sense of urgency to get there. So I'm encouraged by that. You touched on it there, John. This this year is not too dissimilar to the last. No, year. no. I mean, I've said it over and over again. I mean, three or four games into last year, we were probably a little, slightly below average football team, and uh, and we just you know we kept working, and uh, we had tremendous buy-in and leadership, and and you know, and we had some guys that stepped up, and we were trying to kind of figure out, okay. It's a little bit different from a quarterback standpoint than we thought it was going to be. So now what do we do to, to make it easier for the quarterback we have? And, and so we were finding our, our way along, you know, last year. And I think we're doing some of that this year with a lot of new players. Uh, you know, we think we have some players that can be very productive and good. Um, but, you know, the, there are a lot of new faces. And so we're still trying to, to kind of get what we want um, right now. But I do, again, feel like that we're making strides. Your well, defense has forced a lot of takeaways so far. So how big of an emphasis has ball security been? Yeah, I mean, it's always a big emphasis for us, but even more so uh, when you play Houston. I mean, you know, historically, if you go back and look, uh, this, this is one of the things that they've been really good at is, is taking, taking the ball away from offenses and creating turnovers and, you know, pressuring people. I think that's, that's the thing that when you look at their defense, that's what they do pretty consistently. They pressure, you know, they put pressure on you. Um, you know, when you drop back and try to throw, they've got a good pass rush and guys that – on the edge that can really uh, rush and then some guys that can push the pocket inside. And, and so, you know, when that happens, then and you get people in the quarterback's face, bad things start to happen and, and they do a good job of doing that. One of the new faces, Coach, is, is Kendall Browles. How have you felt about his play calling? Yeah, game? good. No, I think Kendall's done a great job. I mean, I think, you know, there's been some times this year where, you know, we've looked um, very efficient. You know, we've had some drives where you just go, okay, that's that's what this is supposed to look like. And typically you don't see that for until a little bit later in the season unless you have a whole veteran team coming back and a lot of experience and all that. Um, and there's been some other times where we sputtered a little bit. And so that's, you know, that's the key. We're just looking for, for consistent play. Um, and again, I think that we, we took some steps in that right direction on Saturday. We just kind of continue to, to get it out of those guys. But I think he's done a good job. I mean, I've been really happy. I like what we're doing offensively. I think it fits, again, who we have and, and what we are. And uh, now we just need some guys to, to step up and solidify some positions and be people that we can count on. Coach, after Saturday's game, you said that we need to get more consistent at the wide receiver position. What does that look like to you in terms of that whole process? Yeah, I think, well, I think the good thing is, you know, it starts with getting a bunch of guys back. You know, we got Dalen back today, practiced. We got uh, John Paul practiced for the first time in a while. Uh, Savion practiced today and, and looked good. And so, I think this is really probably, honestly, the first time this year that we've gone into the ball game with, with all our guys. Uh, and so I feel good about that. And, you know, and, and I think that we'll, you know, we're healthy and, and look forward to, to seeing what 
a week's worth of practice yields, you know, when we get into the ball game. And so um, fired up about that. You said after the game against Nichols, it's hard to keep anyone out of the end zone. How much confidence do you think it gave your defense, you know, moving forward, having a performance like that? Yeah, yeah. I think a lot. You know, I think I think they were really unhappy with the way they played in week one. And, and you know, it's hard, again, when you – I mean, this is – we're not here about making excuses. I mean, our job is to figure out how to get it done, no matter what the circumstances are. But you know, we were on our heels a little bit against Colorado in the Colorado game because you know there was a little bit of the element of the unknown. You know what I mean? We didn't know who was going to play where and what they were going to do exactly. We had seen some stuff before, and how is this quarterback going to transition? And how much eleven personnel are they going to be in? And you know, how much was uh, number twelve going to play? I mean, just all this stuff. You know, we had no idea. And um, and so you know, and and when you're not having success and you don't really have anything you can hang your hat on because of that, you know, you're not saying you're not going into that game going, okay, if we take away these two or three things and here's how we're going to do it, then that's going to create uh, some uncertainty for the offense. Well, you get into a game like that, you're just trying to play catch up the whole game. You know, you're figuring out what they're doing every series, and you're on your heels and. You know, and all of a sudden you're not tackling well and, you know, you panic a little bit. And so, you know, I think obviously we had a, you know, we knew where the receivers were going to be last week. We, we knew what they were going to do. We had a better sense of, of what we were going to see. And, and I think it put our guys a much more at ease. And, you know, when you're at ease, then you're going to play better. You're going to play with more confidence. You're going to play faster. I think you're going to play more physical. And, uh, and, all, and all that showed up on Saturday. You guys are playing the first conference. Game and then you look Big 12, obviously an old rival for TCU. But just talk about that, how different it is facing a team that you're not used to playing. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, this is, I think, my sixth time as a head coach, maybe to coach against Houston. Um, a couple of times at La Tech and then a couple of times at, at, at SMU. Um, you know, when your team's never played an opponent, again, there's a little bit of that unknown. You know, our guys have never played a game in Houston. Uh, but again, we, at least we, we can watch film and we have a sense of, of what we're going to see and how we're going to see it. And, you know, it's, it'll be a challenge for us. You know, anytime you go on the road and you play someplace maybe you've never played before and you, you, um, you don't really know, there's a little bit of, of um, uncertainty. But, but at the same time, you know, I, I think our guys are starting to develop some confidence and, um, and a feeling of who we are. You know, I think every team has to – to kind of go through a process and, and start to figure out, okay, you know, what are we and who are we and, and how are we going to figure out how to get this done? And, you know, and I, th I think that it takes sometimes a, a while to get the train put on the tracks and then, then you got to push it to the top of the hill. And, and I think, you know, I do feel like the train, we're getting the train put on the tracks and we're starting to push it, which is a good thing. Um, but as we said earlier, I mean, you look, Houston's going to come out and, and play as well as they're going to play probably, probably all year. You know, they're going to be um, disappointed in their performance against Rice. They're going to be uh, excited about the first Big 12 game in their stadium. And, and uh, I mean, you know, there's going to be a lot of reasons for those guys to be highly motivated. Sonny, you mentioned that around this time last year, you saw a couple guys stepping up as leaders. Who were you seeing doing that? This yeah, year? yeah, still, you know, still um, starting to see some things. I mean, starting to see, you know, one of the guys offensively that I've been really happy with and just kind of his mentality has been Chase Curtis. You know, Chase has been um, a guy that's kind of been a, a jack of all trades, you know, for our football program. I mean, he just does a lot of stuff on special teams. He's played a lot of uh, football for us. I mean, he's a guy that you never question um, how dedicated he is, how unselfish he is. Um, you know, Chase has been somebody to me that's really has everybody in the room's respect. Um, and that's good to see. You know, I think we've got, um, you know, Jack Bash is probably another guy that to me is starting to, you know, people are starting to recognize how hard he works and, and what he's all about, um, you know, which I'm encouraged to see that. And then, you know, I think, I think, you know, Coker and Coleman are both guys that are, um, you know, they're, they're captains. They're, they're starting to kind of figure out what leadership looks like. And that can be pretty uncomfortable sometimes. You know what I mean? I think that's the, you know, that's that's hard sometimes because, you know, it sets you apart from all the guys on your team. You know, when you're a really strong leader, you know, it's, you kind of step outside the team in some ways. And, and that's hard for young people to do. You know, it's 
they like to like to conform, and so it's a, it's a process to get there. Uh, but, I, but I do like what I'm seeing, and I do think that we're improving in that regard. And you know, it's like we've said all the time: if you don't have great leadership on your program, I mean, that's never an excuse. You know, that means okay, fine. If, if the players aren't great leaders, well, then the coaches have to be great leaders. And so it's you know, if that's the case and you don't have a ton of leadership and that stuff doesn't start to take hold, well then you've got to do it as coaches. And and, and, um, and if you have to do it that way, then that's, that's okay too. It's just not the best way to do it. What are you hoping to see from Chandler as he builds on? Well, just continue to get better. You know, I think that's that's the big thing with us is just, you know, improving and getting better. And, you know, he did a really good job last week taking care of the ball. You know, he had zero turnovers, um, you know, threw it 30 times. Um, really made good decisions, never panicked, was much more comfortable, did a better job running. You know, I think he's starting to figure out, um, you know, those things. When should I run? When should I not run? How should I run? Um, you know, all that takes a little bit of time to figure out as, as a quarterback and a starting quarterback. Um, and, and more than anything, I think with him, it's just getting comfortable, you know, getting comfortable and and, um, and getting confident, you know, where, where you – the biggest thing that, that happens with between quarterbacks and receivers is where the quarterback says, okay, look, I trust this guy. I know he's going to be there. And those are the guys that are going to get the balls, you know, the, the ones that the quarterback trusts. And um, he's going to throw the ball consistently to those players because he knows where they're going to be. And so that's the thing that, that I'm hoping that we get to from the receiver standpoint is, you know, where, okay, he knows exactly how this guy's going to run this route. He knows exactly how this guy's going to run that route. He knows exactly where this guy's going to be and when he's going to be there. And, and that's really what makes a good wide receiver. You know, I think, you know, to me, you know, people talk about receivers and it's, you know, size and speed and this and that and the other. And really it's, it's right place, right time. And how you get there is there's a million different ways to do it. Sometimes it's through power. Sometimes it's through quickness. Sometimes it's through speed. Uh, but the most important thing is just consistency. The quarterback was at Tech last year, and now he's at Houston. What have you seen from him so far? Yeah, yeah, Donovan Smith's a good run. I mean, I, what I like about him, I mean, you can tell he's a, he's a tough kid. Um, I was really impressed with him. We played against him last year, you know, when he was at Texas Tech and got most of the snaps in our game. He, um, I like his toughness. You know, I like his willingness to do whatever it takes to help his team win. Um, you know, I thought he ran the ball well uh, against Rice. I thought he was... Uh, very, very effective. I thought they did a good job, even though they got down early, uh, not panicking uh, in their play calls and sticking with the game plan, and, and they got themselves back in the game, and he was a big part of the reason. Um, he's, you know, he's got a lot of experience. I think he makes good decisions. Uh, he's done a good job so far this year taking care of the football for the most part, and so I like, I like, I like the kid a lot. I mean, I think he's a, a, a good football player. I think he's a good leader. I think he makes their team better. Um, so I've been really impressed with him. Speaking of decisions, do you, do you have to cut down this week for travel? Uh, we're actually going to have an expanded travel squad this week. You're, you're allowed to do it one time a year, and this will be our game. Okay. So what is it? But are there still some that are left? Yeah, year? yeah, yeah. There's some. There's some guys that you know that you wish you could take that you're probably not going to be able to take this week. Uh, some guys that are dressed for us, and but um, you know, but that was kind of going to be our plan was to, to to use this as our expanded travel. I, I don't remember what year that was. Do you guys? Was it? Okay, so ninety nine, yeah, ninety, okay, ninety five, yeah, right around there. Yeah, um, I mean, it was, you know, I remember being surprised. I mean, I was, a, you know, barely out of college. Uh, you know, just it was one of those things. Probably, like people that grew up in on the West Coast, just always assumed the Pac, the Pac twelve was going to be around. I think. I just always assumed the Southwest Conference was going to be around. And at this stage, I wasn't that aware of people changing conferences that often. Um, you know, so I remember that, you know, it was a good league. It was great football, a lot, tons of tradition. Um, you know, some crazy ball games. You know, at that time, you had Houston, who was a run and shoot team, and, and you had some some real shootouts. I know the, the TCU Houston game was, was a wild one where. Over the three, four, six hundred ninety yards, or whatever it was in that game, and and um, you know, so I remember those games again. Probably the thing 
toward the mid nineties, I remember the most, quite frankly, was was Houston and you know being on the shoot team, and Andre Ware and David Klingler and and those guys kind of having the success that they had, and so um, you know that's kind of my recollection of it. Yeah, yeah, my dad was a Southwest Conference guy. I mean, look, he, you know, he coached at Texas from 71 to 76, or maybe 72 to 76, and then, you know, was at Texas Tech for a long time, and most of the time, I think he was at Texas Tech, they were, you know, it was probably about half and half, half Big 12 and half Southwest Conference. We'll go two more questions. Coach, uh, you, you uh, mentioned earlier, we all know that you, you have a relationship with Dana and Coach Woods. Yeah. What, what was he like on the staff? Like, what, what, what stood out about him? Did you know that, hey, this is a guy's going to be head coach? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I was young. I mean, both of us were young. Um, you know, the, the funny thing about Dana and I is, you know, we were both wide receiver coaches for Mike Leach, okay? And so that's not an easy thing because Mike's kind of, Mike was kind of a, really probably thought of himself as an offensive line coach, but he was really probably a, a receiver coach. I mean, that's probably what he spent the most time coaching. Um, and so, I mean, it was, you know, it was tough. I mean, Mike was going to be on you all the time. And, and, and um, you know, I remember Dan and I both kind of, you know, just kind of coming through the ranks, just expecting to get, you know, yelled at or whatever. And we both did. I and mean, it was just kind of part of coaching receivers for Coach Leach. And it was not an easy thing to do. Um, but, you know, I mean, he was smart. He was, um, he was, Dana was always a good communicator. You know, I think that's so important for being a good, a good head coach is somebody that, that can communicate. And I always thought, you know, Dana managed his players well. His guys always played hard. They were always tough. Um, you know, he was obviously smart and in a good offensive mind, but he was, he was a good communicator. You know, and I think that was, to me, the thing that, that you could say, well, yeah, this guy's going to be a head coach someday and, and probably a very successful one because, you know, he, he could he had a vision and he could uh, communicate his vision to his players and to his coaches. And, and, um, and again, I think that's a big part of his success. But he, he's truly a mummy guy. Right? He was, yeah. He played. It was interesting. So Dana, Dana you know, Hal is the head coach at Iowa Wesleyan. And, and – um, and so at that time, you know, Hal Mummy and Mike Leach was the coordinator for Hal at Iowa Westland at the time, and, and Dana played there. I think Dana grew up in a little small town in Iowa um, and played for Hal and Mike, and, and so knew those guys, you know, many years before I did. Um, and so it's funny, you know, I, when I went to Kentucky, I used to hear Mike talk about Dana. He called him Little Dana, and he always talked about Little Dana all the time. And I'm like, who is this Little Dana guy he's always talking about? And then, you know, had a chance to meet him and, and, uh, and then we had a chance to work together. And, you know, I loved working with him. I mean, look, we're, I mean, truly Dana feels like part of our family in a, in a kind of a, a strange sort of way. I mean, I know his kids, um, you know, his son Logan's, I think the world of him and got a lot of respect for, for Dana. And, and um, you know, I, I think it's just a relationship that goes back a long time. And I think there's some, a lot of mutual respect there. Okay, thank you guys, appreciate it.